Hi, I'm Dan Augusto for GearWire.com, and this is Engineering 101. In our last video, we uh, took a look at some of the weird things you can do with convolution reverb plugins. Uh, we're using Perfect Space and Sonar 6. And in this video, what I'd like to do is show you how to make your own impulses um, from, in, in this case, an, an old spring reverb unit. Now, there's different ways that uh, you need to do it depending on which convolution that uh, you have or which system that you're using. Um, but for perfect space, we use a WAV file. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in Logic Pro using their convolution uh, plugin called Space Designer. And then in the following videos, I'm going to show you how to take impulses of different things, uh, like different pedals and also a room. So to start off, we're going to be using this spring reverb. And a situation when you would want to do this is, let's say you have the spring reverb, you like it, but you don't have enough outs on your interface, like you don't want to do all that patching, so you just want to start, open something in the box that sounds kind of like it. It's not going to sound perfect, but it will give you sort of that sound, and this thing has a lot of character, and I really like to use it. Um, so let's check out how we're going to do that. So the first thing that we need to do is create a burst of white noise. And when creating these impulses, these types of impulses, uh, you need about 15 milliseconds. So to make the noise, I'm going to be using the Mini Moog V from Arcturia. It's easy to get white noise. That's the sound we're getting now. So what I have to do here is turn down all the oscillators. So now we're actually getting any sound, and turn on the noise generator and turn that level up. Also, what I need to do is completely open up our filter so we're getting true white noise. So as you can see, no matter what note I hit, we're getting just plain old white noise. So what I'm going to do is just look at our MIDI track for our virtual instrument and just make a note. And I'm actually going to do this in staff view. Just a quick eighth note, doesn't matter what note you hit. And now what I'll do is render that sound out. So what I just have to uh, highlight the region in both tracks and do a edit bounce to tracks. Let's see, our settings look all right. So now what we have here is just a white noise. I'm going to delete our track here so that we don't use up extra system resources. I'm also going to remove the Mini Moog from the synth rack. So the first thing I want to do, because I want this to be nice and loud, is I'm going to um, normalize our, our uh, wave here. And that'll just raise the, uh, the level. I want it at negative 1 dB process it so now we got a nice loud white noise signal. Also what I'm going to do is come in here and make sure that it's as loud as it's going to get on the first sample. I also kind of want to have it at a zero crossing. So this is how our wave will sound at the beginning. All right so that was two times through it. So now, what I need to do, I'm just going to bump this up to the beginning, very beginning of the project, is to make this into a 15 millisecond uh, burst. And that's not incredibly easy, so what I'm going to do is use a little mathematics. So using the plain old calculator that comes with Windows, I'm going to figure out how many samples need to be in our impulse. Our sampling rate is 44.1 kilohertz. That means there's 44,100 samples every second. Now we need a 15 millisecond sample. So all I have to do is multiply 44.1000 times 0 .015. And that's how many seconds basically there are. So our answer here is 661.5. We can round that up to 662 samples. So back in Sonar, all I have to do is right-click on my wave and go down to Clip Properties. So this brings up the Clip Properties dialog. 
And in here, we see that there is actually a length setting. Uh, this number in here is not in the right format, so what we have to do is go over here and change that to samples. And then if we change that to our magic number, which is 662, press OK. Now our wave file is the proper length. So this is what our dry impulse sounds like. Not a very interesting sound, but we can do a lot of things with it. Now, this particular unit has RCA inputs and outputs, so I'm going to need two sets of cables with RCA on one end and quarter inch on the other to go to and from my interface. So now that our reverb unit is plugged in and ready to go, we need to take a look at the settings. The only setting that we need to worry about on here is time. So I'm going to record one at low and medium and then one very high. So first one is going to be low. So as you can see, back in Sonar, I've created a separate track to record our impulse to. I've set the input to come back from the reverb unit, and I've also taken care that there's no feedback loops. I hit record, and here we go. Now I'm going to let it go for a little bit because there could be a lot of tail on this reverb. Next we'll record our medium setting. And now, we'll do our high setting. These are kind of noisy samples. And when we use these for impulses, we kind of want to get rid of a lot of that noise. So I'm going to use EQ to do that. Now this is the Sonitis EQ. And what I'm going to do is basically make notch filters to take out some of that hum that we're getting, since this is an old unit. So what I'm going to do is loop the file, and we'll just sort of EQ the sounds out. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to raise the Q of our filter here, and just bring it up all the way. And now I'm going to start to slide the frequency until I can hear it boosting that hum. right around here. There's, there's one of the frequencies right there. So now I'll just completely cut out that frequency. Next I'm going to do the same thing with our next band. Raise up the gain and sweep the frequency. There's another one. Bring that down. And I continue doing this until I get most of that hum out. So lastly what I've done is I've put, I've put a filter on the high end. What I like mostly about this reverb is the lower sort of frequencies that we get. So let's listen to this sound with this. So that's a pretty usable impulse. Now what I need to do is bounce our EQ effect to the file. To do that I'll just take the file, do an edit, bounce the tracks, and there we have it. This is our long file. I'm going to take this impulse that we have now with our EQ applied. And normalize it. We'll normalize this to minus one as well. Next, with the file highlighted, I go to File, Export. Now we need to choose a location for the file. And I want to put it with the rest of the impulses I have. It's under the C drive, Program Files, 